Hi, this video is more about acceleration. For these examples, we'll let positive be to the right. Sometimes we would say east, um, but positive to the right or east. What does it mean to say a car has an acceleration of two meters per second squared? What does that mean? Well, remember that two meters per second squared is the same thing as writing two meters per second per second, or two meters per second over one second. Remember, acceleration is a change in velocity, positive or negative, divided by the time it takes to make that change. So two meters per second per second means that every second that goes by, that car speeds up by an amount equal to two meters per second. So if the car starts at three meters per second and it accelerates at two meters per second squared, which means every second that goes by it increases speed by two meters per second, at the end of one second, how fast is the car going? Well, every second that goes by, we add two. So instead of going three meters per second, it's now going five meters per second. At two seconds, we add another two. So instead of five meters per second, it's going at seven meters per second. Remember too, that acceleration is a vector quantity, right? We use the little vector symbol above the A and the vector symbol above the V to indicate that it's a vector. That delta, remember, is changing. So this, we read this as change in velocity. And when you write delta V or delta X or delta anything, it's always the final minus the original. Always, always, oh, I erased it there. Always the final minus the original. So it's the final velocity minus the original velocity. That'll give us our change in velocity. So the direction of the acceleration vector is the direction of the change in velocity. Graphically, if you were drawing arrows to represent your vectors, you would subtract two vectors by adding the opposite. That reminds me of my eighth grade math teacher who never allowed us to subtract anything. We always had to add the negative. But anyway, if I was gonna add VF, the final velocity, and VO, notice that the velocity is decreasing, or increasing actually, it goes from original to final. If I just added those together, I would add them tip to tail and get a big long vector that way. But if I'm subtracting VO, instead of adding VO tip to tail, I flip it around like this, so it's pointing left, that's minus VO. And so the acceleration vector is this. This is the representation of the change in the velocity vector from final minus the original. Let's look at some other examples. If we look at some two motion diagrams, similar to ones that we've looked at before, uh, we can see how this uh, affects the acceleration vector. So in this green one here, we see we start at zero and go to one and two and three. And you'll notice that these positions are, they're getting more space uh, as time goes on, which means that the velocity is increasing. We're covering more distance with time. So that first velocity from zero to one, we could call that V1, and then it gets bigger from one to two, V2, and then bigger still from two to three, we call that V3. If we were interested in knowing the acceleration between two and three, we would need to subtract the last one from the first one. That's the final minus the original. So that'd be V3 minus V2. And if I do that, I just recopied V3 here, drew it long, and then I copied V2 here, but I flipped the direction because it's a negative V2. And then the acceleration vector is from here to there. And so the acceleration is to the right. The velocity is to the right, and the acceleration is to the right. In the second example, um, down here in purple and blue, um, we go zero, one, two, three, so we're still moving to the right, but look what happens to the velocity in this case. The dots are getting closer together, which means the velocity is getting smaller and smaller as time goes on. If I ask the same question, what's the acceleration between two and three, I would a bit also subtract the final from the original, V3 minus V2, and I write V3, I just copied it down, and I copied V2 down, but I flipped it so it went the other direction because we're adding the negative. And then we get a lot, sorry, an acceleration vector that points left. So the velocity is right, the acceleration is left. And in this case, that means that object is getting slower. It's slowing down. So what I want you to get from that is this. If the acceleration vector and the velocity vector are in the same direction, they're both to the right, they're both up, they're both down, they're both left, then the speed increases. But if the acceleration vector and the velocity vector are in opposite directions, the speed decreases. So if velocity is up and acceleration is down, then it's gonna slow. 
if velocity is up and acceleration is up, then it's going to increase speed. Don't get caught in an acceleration trap. This is Admiral Akbar's warning. It's a trap. Um, look at this example. Here we've got three and two and one and zero, which means the object is actually going left, right? From time-wise, so it goes zero, one, two, and three. And here the velocity is in the negative direction. It's to the left. And it's speeding up. So if we did that same kind of analysis that we did on the, on the previous board, um, you would see that the acceleration is also left and the velocity is left, and here it's speeding up. So here we have an example of a negative acceleration that is to the left, but in this case, it's increasing speed. So many students get caught in this trap and they think negative acceleration means slowing down, but that's only true if the, if the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative, then that's slowing down. But if they're in the same direction, negative, negative, left and left, then that means speeding up. Thanks.